Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 46 of the unofficial, official, unofficial Rogue Company podcast broadcast. I'm here with Dirt Lord. I'm here with Garbo. And I'm here with Griffin. And this is the Rogue Company podcast, bringing you all the news that you need to know about Rogue Company. And we're going to hit it off here real quick with the Eternal Conflict hotfix. So we'll run through this. This came out a couple of days ago. Whenever you're hearing this, it'll be several days ago. But we'll run through the hotfix here, and then we'll give some ideas, thoughts, and opinions on it. So it says here, hey, Rogue Company players, we hope you're enjoying the Eternal Con Conflict update. Uh, but we know that some of you have been experiencing issues that have been causing crashes and incorrect rewards display. We've been hard at work on a hotfix that addresses these issues, and we're excited to announce that it's now live. Here's a rundown of what we fixed. So Wicked Glimpse was causing the game to crash, but not anymore. You can now use her to your heart's content. If you've purchased the Elite Event Pass and noticed that the rewards and levels weren't displaying correctly, we've got good news for you. The issue has been resolved and you can now see the rewards and level that you've earned. We've also adjusted any players who did not receive those levels correctly to their appropriate level. We also fixed an issue where using Angelic Juke was causing the game to crash. Now you can use this without fear of a crash. Lastly, some of you were experiencing an issue where your weekly contracts weren't being displayed. We know how important those contracts are, so we made sure to fix that as soon as we could. We understand how frustrating these issues can be, and we appreciate your patience while we worked on fixing them. We are still reviewing the data and investigating reports of issues players are experiencing with our servers. We're always striving to make Rogue Company the best experience possible, and we're grateful for your support. Thank you for being part of the community. Sincerely, the Rogue Company team. So, I mean, what's an update without a bunch of issues? You know what I mean? Like, to be fair, it's been better than it has been in the past. But, like, when this update came, when the Eternal Conflict update came out, it was like the first event pass that they released. It was massive amounts of balance changes in relation to, like, speed and toughness, weapons, health regeneration delay, um, perks, all that kind of good stuff. So it's one of those situations to where, like, whenever you change something up, that dr dramatically then you're gonna have to expect an influx of players either coming back into the game or checking some of the stuff out especially like if the cosmetics are seen and people are like whoa what's this about and they download rogue company for the first time what you don't want to happen is the event pass that just doesn't work they have to disable skins in the event pass the levels on the event pass aren't matching up to what they actually are in the event pass. And to top it all off, good luck running a smooth game. <laughs> because, like, if if I was a new player that downloaded the game because of the Eternal Conflict update, I would not be happy with the game. And I would probably uninstall it because of just strictly based on how the servers were acting at that time. It's not been a pleasurable experience at all. At least not for me, you know? Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> and and here's the thing about the servers, right? So you would think that, like, the easiest way to fix the servers is to just, like, get new servers, right? But... I don't see. Well, I, th I think the, the thing that, like... Because I was thinking about this. I think the thing that... I don't ever really think about and a lot of other people don't ever really think about is the logistics behind migrating not only Rogue Company, but Paladins, Realm Royale, and Smite over to a whole new server host and all of the all that would go in to making that transition happen. Because like I mean they could upgrade the servers that they have access to. They could upgrade their um cloud server functionality thing that they have going on. But, like, I don't know. At the end of the day, it's like they're looking at cost versus quality versus, you know, all these different metrics. And it's like, okay, like, what makes the most sense? And it sucks that they can't just, like, go in there and upgrade the servers across all the high-res games and everything. But maybe that's what they need to do? I don't know. 
like a lot of these bugs and issues stem from the fact that like the game doesn't run the way that it should be running, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so maybe if it yeah, was yeah, back to what you said about unpleasant experiences. I mean, what you said about all those people that are coming into the game and everything, that's what they're experiencing. They get two or three rounds of doing that, they're gonna be like, Well, I ain't gonna play this if this is how it's gonna run. Yeah. You know? They can go play Roblox and they or want back to, to Fortnite. Play. Or go to yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would run better. Like it just ugh. Yeah, no, I I agree. And it sucks that it's that way because like man, the the event pass, I love it. Uh the changes for the for the weapons and all the speed and toughness and stuff is yeah. great. Like on the surface, it's a great update. It was just like the classic real company execution, you know? Well, to be fair, like when I thought the event like first dropped, I thought the servers were running better. Because there was yeah. like a moment in time that I was like, I mean, I was, I mean, you were both like talking about running the Ibex, you know, for an example. And like both of us that day were like, dude, the Ibex is like the gun, you know? And then like after that, it felt like every day after that, the servers just was like, Bleh. it just kept getting worse and kept getting worse. And like, again, now it's like I'm two miles past the wall and I'm still getting down. <laughs> What it, what or I'm it, rubber banding halfway across the map. You know? what, it, what it feels like to me is like whenever the update first came out, you got these like massive lag spikes that would happen that would either cause yeah. a network disconnect or everybody to like stop and run in place for a little bit. That's and yeah. But now it's like they figured out a way to smooth that out. But what it does is like, it's almost like it's a complete desync, right? Like, what this what's happening on the server side and what's happening on both the client sides isn't matching up and it's yeah. like it, it's basically like there was a wrinkle in the covers and then they like went and smushed mm. the wrinkle out of it and when they did like that bucket of gravy that was underneath it just spread <laughs> across the entire server you know what i mean instead of yeah. and to me i would i would rather deal with one isolated you know server spike in in a round or in a match and deal with like running in place and maybe some cheap downs or something like that as opposed to experiencing it the entire match that we're yeah. playing you know server yeah. gravy and yeah. feel like that you're 3 seconds behind everybody else yeah cuz there be times that like you're mate you're hit you're making you're shooting your shots you're hitting them but then all of a sudden they're not there, and you didn't get any damage whatsoever, but then you're, like, just taking 60 damage in two seconds. You're like, what just happened? Yeah. Well, maybe here's an idea. Now, this sounds crazy. Let me know what you guys think. This sounds absolutely insane, but I would say that 80 to 90% of the game modes that exist in Rogue Company are round-based game modes, right? So, Demolition... You know, whenever the whole team's wiped or whatever happens, the round ends and then you're in the plane. Strike out, you play until the end of the round and you get, go back in the plane. Um, dodgeball, same thing. Like, the only thing that doesn't do that is, like, TDM and King of the Hill, right? When we played Wingman, dude, it was smooth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Smooth. Why can't... It's only four people. Why can't, whenever we're in the plane, waiting for the next round to start, the server, like reconnects or does something in that moment where it's like you can purchase stuff in the plane you're not going to feel a noticeable difference in anything that happens or anything like that and have it like reconnect or maybe migrate to a new server host or something like that in that downtime when you're buying your weapons and stuff that way at least hopefully that round will run smooth and if the server recognizes issues in that round then whenever you go back into the plane let's try something different let's try to reconnect to a different place and have it basically dynamically connecting to different servers through the entire match to try to give at least the illusion of a fluid play experience you know yeah I mean, it could be done. It would take a yeah. lot of work, but it could be done. Refresh it, free up all that RAM. Exactly, right? Close all those Chrome browsers. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> right, so. 
But I'm glad that they were able to re-enable the skins that were in the event pass and a lot of the other issues that were in there. But what I will say is they are actively, the developers are actively seeking out server issues by requesting game logs, uh, match IDs, et cetera, et cetera, from the player base. So if you do have issues in a match, they said the best thing to do is like when you're playing a laggy match, and it happened like it's dramatically bad. And if you're able to, to leave the game at that point, get the server logs or the game logs from that session and then export them out and send them to the developers, then then restart the game back up. And I know that sounds tedious. I know that sounds like a pain in the ass, but it will help them narrow down. It's like, hey, the last match that I played, if you look at the server logs, it's got a bunch of nonsense that happened in there so maybe check to see what was going on on your side when that was happening so i guess at least they're actively trying to search it out you know i know that like console and everybody's not able to do that but still at least they're at least they're trying something i guess you know i mean they need to do something they want to maintain the player base that they have or to get more yeah, because right now all this do all this is doing is just lowering their numbers. People are not going to tolerate their them rubber banding everywhere. They're like they're just they're not going to. They're going to get fed up and they're right. going to leave. <clears throat> and Tally brings up a good point. I feel like that is a bit tedious. There has to be another way to collect this information. What happened to reporting to server button? Does that not do anything? I mean, absolutely, right? Like. And that's that's absolutely something that I am going to ask the developers about because, like, what's the point of having the report the server button if it doesn't do anything, you know? Because yeah, that's on console, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And all we have to do is just press it. Yeah. What does that button do? It goes into the recycle bin. <laughs> it, 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 it goes straight yeah. from walls to the garbage. Yeah, well, straight sometimes it won't even let you press it. I know, right? If, yeah, if the match out, is... It's like, we know. Yeah. I feel like someone who is playing casually is not going to want to go through all of that and will instead just not play for the rest of their session and do something. Exactly. Exactly. You're exactly right, Tally. So I'm going to check into that. I'm going to ask about that report server button and see if that actually even does anything. So. Oh, and I hope so. Like you have this feature in the game for everybody to press and it doesn't do shit. Yeah. You have a tool, <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> All right, so next up, I'm going to kind of breeze through this a little bit, but we're going to talk about our experience playing, you know, at least to the best of our ability, the Eternal Conflict update. And I'm not going to go in depth or anything like that. We're just going to hit some of the high notes that we have uh, experienced and kind of give it a good once over as to like how we feel about everything. I'm going to kind of bypass like the rogues and their new perk sets and everything because like, it's it's a noticeable difference, but it's not terribly noticeable in my experience. Like, like Juke's new perk set makes sense, in my opinion, for the way most people play her. But I know there's a lot of people mad about that. So, I don't know. It, it is what... It, that's a whole different conversation. But what I will... We will talk about the passive update for, for Lancer. Them disabling the dodge roll uh, reload for... The Devotion, the Sniper Rifles, Lot Machine Guns, and all the shotguns, except for the Striker 810. That's been one of the best changes to the game, in my opinion. And, like, Lancer, she's still a very powerful character because there's literally no downtime, you know, with her weapon in terms of, like, reloading and, and ammo uh, management and all that kind of stuff. But it's almost like playing against someone that has um, replenish, right? At this point, so it's not it's not as bad in my opinion, and I do like that change so so much, so much. We don't we don't have to worry about those uh, rope shotguns, or like the RB, all that. So yeah, it feels good. It was like today we ran into that striker lancer. Yeah. <clears throat> so then, I mean, granted that sucked, but. That felt better than an Arbitrator or the SLK or the yeah. S12. Like, whoo, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> and you also have to keep in mind too, it's like only two of the shotguns have been adjusted so far. The striker yeah. hasn't been touched and the SKL hasn't been touched. So I'm sure those will get their day in the sun sooner rather than later, but at least like, at least going up against Lancers has been way more kind of even killed in terms of like, and with the, the nerf that they did in the last update to life drain, like she is still a powerful character. You do have to play her more cautiously. So the people that have been running around with her, with the arbitrator, with that life drain that heals like 80 HP and all that stuff, they kind of got like a rude awakening, which is great. You know? I mean, I don't really see that many Lancer players. Yeah, like, I know. I feel like I've, I mean, there's actually been a very low number of Lancer players. Yeah. I've seen more Switchblade players and Glimpse players. Yeah. So. Yeah. Juke. Yeah. Juke. Now, people that are more, I wouldn't say more invasive, but like, yeah, she, Lancer's quiet, but like, Switchblade's more destructive. Uh, Juke's more destructive. Uh, Glimpse is more. Like, you can get out of the situation, kind of. Like, I mean, sometimes when she goes invisible, you can't shoot her, even though you just saw her there. Yeah. <laughs> so, like... Yeah. I don't know. Like, Lancer's just... I don't feel as destructive now. Yeah. Which is good. I mean, she needed to be toned down a little bit, and it makes... Like, there. it feels like that there's a skill level now. Like, you have to be at least skilled in like shooting and aiming and being somewhat evasive whenever you play with her as opposed to hit the ability run in behind them pop pop with the arbitrator roll pop pop you know what i mean yeah and then just instant down people yeah where the striker is not a one hit down and so uh, you you have i guess what a 0.5 0.5 seconds to respond to Lancer. Yeah. <clears throat> if you survive and have enough time to whip your camera to her, but yeah. Yeah. It, it, like I said, it definitely beats the SLK or the SKL and the arbitrator. Right. So for Ronan, with them reducing the blast radius of the knife whenever it is planted, even though it was by 0.5 meters, it's like night and day. Like, you can actually roll away from this thing when you see it planted and survive. Oh, yeah. Thank God. Because that was one thing that drove me insane, was the the size of the explosion radius for that thing. So it feels ten times better, in my opinion. Uh, Saint getting the regeneration filled. Uh, and we didn't already have an S character. Now he's an S plus character. Yeah, right. <laughs> because, like, dude, I was, I think I was thinking about this the other day. Like, King of the Hills matches if you got a Saint that buys regeneration fills and pops it on the hill, and all your people can, like, maintain from dying, or can, or if that Saint can keep getting people up while that regeneration fills is going, dude. Yeah. He's not even an S character at that point. He's just, like, triple S. Yeah. And you can <laughs> pair it. You pair him with yeah. Runway, you have more, and then whenever you upgrade it, I think it extends the duration and maybe the HP regain on it. So, like, it is... It's almost broken. It's a good thing oh. that they only gave it to one character right out of the gate. Could you imagine if they're like, we're going to open the regeneration field up, and Saint and Dahlia and Runway and Seeker are all going to have Mm-mm. access? Could you imagine? Yeah. See, see, in my head now... I think Saint personally, they need to take the gener- regeneration field off Saint. Yeah, honestly, I, 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 think, agree. I think. Yeah, I think Saint and Dahlia don't need the regeneration field. Give the regeneration field to Runway and C. Yeah, I agree one hundred percent. Because it Man, is. I keep forgetting about it. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, you don't need it, Dirt. <laughs> 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 Jeez. You are the medic. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it don't matter what's happening. You're like, I got you, dude. Like we're in the middle of combat. I got the perk. Oh, I got you. I got, I got the perk. Yeah, that's how you say you say it. And you're like, I got the perk. Get behind the wall. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> but yeah, I just feel like if those two characters have the that perk, it'd be cool. And just go ahead and go ahead and get runway. That would actually kind of balance runway out a little bit, like take away the trip mines. Yeah, the regeneration field. They could legitimately support. Yeah, 
And they could take away one of those two. They could even take away the Simtex and leave her with the trip mines, and it would make her less of a breacher and more of a support character. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, 100. Yeah. So, and well, actually, to be fair, what you just said, it would make her more support than, yeah, than with the Simtex. So, yeah. Booyah, dude. Booyah. Booyah. The, <laughs> the speed and toughness getting completely removed out of the game. Um, I kind of miss it sometimes, but the one thing that I will say is it made the entire roster of rogues 110% viable now. Like, Seeker was viable, even though he was a one-toughness because of the perks that he has access to. But a lot of people didn't run him. Same thing with Switchblade, you know, Lancer to an extent. People didn't run him all that much. Yeah, because, like, they're fast. They're, they can yeah, move well, around. Yeah. But they're squishy. Yep. Now, I've seen more people play Seeker since they reverted the speed and toughness and Switchblade and some of these other rogues that you never saw anybody play because everybody's on an even playing field. And the only thing that kind of does anything to kind of either negate damage or absorb damage is armor or bulletproof. And only a yep. certain set of rogues have access to those. Yeah, but I've noticed that bulletproof is not on a lot of roads now. Like Secret, Va, Cannon, I can't think of anybody else right this second. But like those people that have that perk, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Especially with armor, like Cannon, Cannon, for example. Oh, no, let's, no, don't talk about Switchblade. Leave Switchblade alone. <laughs> but Cannon, Cannon. <laughs> With the armor and bulletproof, God Almighty! Oh I think Secret also has armor and bulletproof, or something like that. Or she? No, she's got life drain. Yeah, and bulletproof, and so she's insane. So play. No, she has restock. <laughs> she's got life drain. She has like a rare. She, yeah, she has rare, but Secret has a uh, legendary. So like she like down somebody and almost gets all of her health back. Yeah. And then with bulletproof, dude, like she just hardly ever goes down. Like I mean, dude, I mean, I ran her with a twenty four S, and I was like, oh my god, is secret broke? Yeah. <laughs> so like, I don't know. Maybe they may nerf her. I didn't mean like get distracted on that, but like, there's just certain characters with that bulletproof that have made them like that's where the toughness is for them. Because like Anvil's no longer a problem. I feel like even though I think he has bulletproof too, don't he? Uh, yeah, and a legendary armor. Is that not right? They, yeah, he 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 still has access to it. Yeah, yeah. So like, I mean, legendary. I yeah, legendary. But in, I mean, I feel like I deal with Anvil a lot better than I can deal with Secret. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the the current rogues that have access to it, which this is a hundred percent up to date because Juke's still on here, but Anvil, Cannon, Secret, Switchblade, and Vi. So it's just a handful of the rogues that have access. You got five, you know? You got five. Yeah. <clears throat> so and dude, if they're all if the whole team is stacked with bulletproof. Yeah. You're gonna have, you're gonna have a time. Yeah, you're gonna have a tough time. Yeah. Right. Because right. I think all the rarities of bulletproof are what, epic and up? Epic and legendary. I don't yeah. think there's a rare version of bulletproof. I don't think so. I don't think they have a rare version <laughs> of that. Yeah. But so actually. No, it's just t either 10% or 15%. So it's epic and legendary, yeah. Yeah, so it's epic and legendary. So, like, the rogues at Gim are already getting a 10% reduced damage and a 15% reduced damage. So they're technically the, I'm not saying the more superior rogues, but, like, they're the rogues that can take the most damage. Yeah, right. <clears throat> and Tally said something interesting that kind of goes into the next point here. Uh, I th she said that, I think I was uh, neutral with speed and toughness when they first introduced it. I think it allowed to further personalize the rogues. Now with the revert, I think more people are able to play recklessly with rogues because they don't have those setbacks anymore. And I agree, but I think the thing that kind of offsets that a little bit is that delayed health regeneration. And you see people still try, like I'm still trying to get used to that timing. We talked about this on the last episode where like that rogue health regeneration timing is ingrained in my DNA. And now we're having to rewrite our DNA a little bit, but even though it's one second, that one second feels like an eternity. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. 
Because there's been many times that I think um, my health is regenerating and it's not, and yeah. I will peak. Yeah. You know, I'll challenge, get shot. You know, the other person's like, why do you challenge? What an idiot. You only had 20 HP. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, I thought my health was regenerating. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> and, and it's not a bad change. Like, I don't dislike that change at all, but it is very jarring until you, like, start getting in the swing of things like the first couple of days was kind of rough but now i've gotten a little bit more used to it and I've, I've got a little bit more accustomed to how it works and everything but um it, it's like the speed and toughness made people play faster but the health regen the health region delay is forcing people to play slower and like the first day or two after the update, you could absolutely tell because if you would drop into TDM or any kind of the, any respawn game modes, people were playing it so passively because they're like overestimating how long they need to stay in cover to get that HP regeneration. Now it feels it's a little bit more fluid because people are starting to learn it a little bit better. You know, I also see her point though, because like Switchblade, even though I was trying to avoid it. Which is the example, like, she has, like, one toughness. Mm-hmm. Now she doesn't. So, like, she was already crazy with yeah. one toughness, being quick, being able to throw all of her stuff. Now, like, she doesn't have anything to limit her yeah. from stopping her from doing that. And, again, like, she's explosive. Like, I really think she's the stronger version of Lancer now. Yeah. Because, again, like, she has the same ability as Lancer technically, besides that she has to throw something, use her grenade launcher, whatever, you know. But, like, she has live training. She has all the same stuff. So, like, she's able to, and restock, so she's able to do all the the nutty things. So, like, like Tally would say, like, now we're having these people that are just running around with Switchblade with a 24S that's able to just power hop around a corner and burn you down because she's used, she used her ability and you didn't even see it coming. Right. It's the same thing with Juke, too, because, like, there's moments with Juke, like, she'll, you know, she, she throws that, dr- that drone on you. And she, that's like the distraction because like you're wanting to shoot the drone because if you don't, it's going to keep ticking on. Yeah. And so like, when you turn around to go do it, she comes in, does the whole juke play, burns you down. So like it's, I mean, I see where T- Tally's point is, but I also see your point with that one second delay. But you also got to think about people that have like adrenaline shot, like Cannon yeah. and Kestrel, uh, people that can just negate that entirely. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like, yeah, sure, you may have stopped them, but if they have Gadgeteer or and they're popping an adrenaline shot every however many seconds, then pretty hard target to take down. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's almost like if they're going to, like, change up the health regeneration, like, I know that bounce back is like it decreases that time, which is fine, but it would be cool if, like, if they had a perk similar to Life Drain, like, you know, Life Drain gives you a health increase whenever you down someone. What yeah. if when you down someone, it starts your health regeneration right then? You see what I'm saying? Like, you actively have to do something to be able to start that health regeneration process by downing someone. But as soon as you down them, it starts healing you until you take damage again. That is a very tactical perk that they could put in the game that would kind of change up the flow and momentum of a match, depending on who had access to that perk, you know, they could make that an ability for a road though, too. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah. That could just actually be an ability. Yeah. One of their passives or whatever, then Dahlia could link to it. So that way I would think that would just limit that way. So many roads wouldn't get. Yeah. Because they, it would be spread out, I think, pretty consistently, you know? Yeah, and then I feel like certain rogues would be way better than other rogues with it. <laughs> yeah, there's right. going to be some rogues that are going to exceed, you know? They're going to yeah. just, all, no matter what, there's always going to be one rogue that does better with a perk than another one does, so. Yeah, absolutely. So with the weapon changes that we got, I'm going to hit pistols real quick here. So the Executioner, the Spitfire, and the Warrant got a, adjusted in this update. And the one thing that I do want to hit on before we go in into it is the Spitfire got the SMG community requested changes that everybody wanted the SMGs to be. They wanted pinpoint accuracy, reduced range, all that good stuff. And that's what they gave the Spitfire. 
I think the common consensus with the community is they don't like the change, but they still want the SMGs to be like that. Doesn't really make any sense to me, but okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. like whatever. Um, but the, the executioner, you know, it got a little bit of a ADS accuracy reduction. Of course, the headshot damage and body shot damage was increased. It feels pretty good right now. Um, it feels very powerful. And then the warrant feels like the warrant to me is like the unsung hero of the pistols. Because like if you're playing where you can fire that thing as fast as you can pull the trigger, it has so much damage output, you know? Yeah, I've seen you shoot it so fast and down people. Like I can't shoot my trigger; don't shoot that fast. Right. <laughs> You've done some pretty nutty stuff with it, so right. But I think that the pistol changes are are pretty good right now. We've got the executioner, Spitfire, Warrant, and the revolver. The only two pistols that haven't been touched yet is the P12 and also the Salvo. And I don't know if they're going to get any adjustments or, you know, any t kind of tweaks or changes, but um, I do see a lot of people running the P12 right now as a way to like compensate for the revolver change, which I still feel like the revolver is very much a viable pistol to use. I think all of them are viable, but, the, you know, of course, we're looking for the next meta because we we can't be pro gamers unless we're looking for the next meta, guys. So anyway, <laughs> I think that like the P12 just to shut people up, just reduce the range of it, like make the fall off a little bit closer to your character and be done with it, especially the headshot damage. Cause it, it does deal a pretty substantial amount of headshot damage, even at range and it's silenced right out of the gate. You can't see anybody that's using it. So it's already got one advantage that none of the other pistols have access to. So maybe we need to make it a little bit less bursty in my opinion. That's just where I stand with it. But the pistol changes that we got are pretty good so far. The HRM 30K, it got a huge amount of changes. What do you guys think about how that thing feels now? Even though that they have they have added so many changes to it, I still feel that's one of the best ARs. Yeah. Yeah, it still slaps. <laughs> yeah. It's still accurate. I still down people ridiculously with it. I mean, it's still one of my favorite ARs. Like if when I'm when we're having to clutch up and go hard, that's the one I run to. Yeah, I still do it. Like and it it still drops. Like I ran to it when we first when the first update dropped and I heard about that. I was like, all right, we're gonna run the HRM, and it almost didn't feel like they changed it at all. Just about. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of feel like the the fire rate reduction on it and a little bit of the headshot damage getting toned down a little bit but like to me with it firing slower makes it easier to control makes it mm -hmm. easier to be accurate with so you're compensate even though you're not getting damage out as fast or as much damage out as fast as you were before with the headshot damage being dropped down a little bit you're still consistently firing shots on someone as opposed to kind of being all over the place you know yeah. yeah, I agree. <clears throat> the Nightshade and the Riptide have also taken the lead. So, yeah, and I think like with the speed and toughness being adjusted, you see a lot of these weapons that everybody's like, those weapons are terrible, like the KA-30 and like the Sahara, you know, they fix the inconsistent fire rate on it. But you see a lot of these weapons coming in because like, I think the mentality that people had was like, since toughness exists, we need to use the heavier hitting weapons to be able to combat toughness. And that's not the, the, the reality of it. The reality is you just have to hit one or two more bullets on them. You need to be more accurate, not do more damage. You know what I mean? And you see that like it's it's crazy how you remove the toughness and now everybody's like the most broken weapons in the game right now are the KA-30, the Nightshade, the Riptide, like all these weapons that were still viable through the whole speed and toughness thing that are that have always been viable to an extent and meta at certain points of the game. But now they're being played more because it's it's all mental. You know what I mean? It's all I mental. Feel, I don't even feel those are the ones that are like. Oh God! They're running this. It's pissing me off. Like 
that I wouldn't even consider like, like the OP weapons because I I'm okay getting killed by the Night Shade and getting killed by the KA thirty. Yeah, because I've run it myself and they don't feel that powerful. Like, and but, you're right. Yeah, you need to be more accurate. <clears throat> you're right, but people that are accurate and hitting with a hard power weapons, dude, yeah. those are the ones that we need to like. Though, though, that's when you know those are the guns you need to fix because. Now, yeah, like y'all said, now we're on this even playing field. The only, again, the people that have advantage is the bulletproof and the armor characters because they have a little more damage and whatever. That's the toughness balance, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, again, like people that are able to aim with these super powerful weapons, and I'm not talking about the Nutshade or the K30, I'm talking about Hydra. Mm. Hydra's the one. Yeah. All right. I'm telling you Dude, right I'm now, close. I'm Just... sick. I'm tired of getting. Burn down or two shot with a so hydra. fast, so yeah. fast, like no response time. And like again, nightshade and riptide. Like I, at least I know I'm getting shot by that thing before yeah. I go. Down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know? before you see the symbol in the corner. <laughs> yeah, what the yeah. fuck was that? Yeah, what was that? Yeah, I just, the hydra. I just know I'm. <laughs> I'm just dead, you know, and I'm yeah. so mad. I'm so angry. Yeah. Okay, the same, and like the other one that I'm getting that I'm really <laughs> irky with right now is the is the mall, dude. Like, yeah, oh, I love yeah. the mall. I love it, but right now it is so accurate and so like I think it's because it's so accurate right now is why it's broke. I don't even think it's broke because of power. I think it's just broke because of accuracy. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> and you can a, look, there's no hindrance right. with it. Yeah. <sighs> There's no recoil. Like you aim yeah. it, and you don't even have to move the joystick. You don't have to pull the joystick down to balance that recoil out. You just yeah let it go. You just pull the R two and just rip, dude. Yeah, you just down somebody. And you're like, oh, I've got seventy five oh, moves I'm like, down that person. I wasn't even trying. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just keep going. Just keep going. Well, and and that's the thing with it. You move as fast with the mall as you do with the SMGs. You ADS as fast with the mall as you do with the SMGs. Uh, you have 108 bullets in the clip or however many whenever you buy gunsmith and upgrade it all the way. Like, there's no restrictions. You move at the same pace as everybody else whenever you're firing it and whenever you're ADSing it. Like, there's no drawbacks or restrictions to that weapon whatsoever. And Good. I think... It, woo! Wow! Yeah, I, and I, I honestly feel like that's what's... Because I, I do feel like you've got two really good extremes with the light machine guns. You've got the lower damage, accurate maul, and then you've got the higher damage, you know, less accurate until you get that, those shots up with the uh, conviction. You've got a good split there, but the problem is, is you can run around with that thing with anvil, like you're running around with chalk or running around with Dahlia and just melt people's faces off. You know, if I'm curious, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'm I'm just saying, like, if I'm carrying around something that's a that's like barely smaller than Cannon's minigun, and I'm moving three times faster than Cannon is when he has the minigun out, that's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's literally like Cannon constantly walking around with his heavy machine gun out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Anvil has replenished, right? Oh yeah, he does. Yeah, <laughs> pretty sure. So guess <laughs> what? The mall doesn't have to stop firing, guys. I mean, you just, I think with all the perks, too, you have over like 300 bullets. Yeah. With him, it's a yeah. lot. Well, for, with Anvil, like, what, again, another thing that just makes him so strong is like, again, we, we don't talk about is the bulletproof in the armor. So, like, if you have this guy that's coming around the corner running that mall with bulletproof, legendary bulletproof, legendary armor for Plenish. The guy's probably not going down. He's probably dropping two or three people. Most likely, there's a Saint reviving in. There's probably a Dahlia link to it. There's just probably something. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, like even with Mac, when the mall's in Mac's hand, it's kind of a problem because yeah. he's got he yeah. gets the armor back all the time. Like he downs people, armor back. He also he's running restock, so he doesn't have replenish. But like he again restock. So and then yeah. he can just. He shoots people, gets all his ammo back, gets his armor up. So then he's just, he's actually stacking. So he actually does quite a little bit. He's a little bit better than Anvil in this situation because he can keep stacking his armor. 
Yeah. He just doesn't have bulletproof. Yeah. And they did remove replenish off of Anvil in this update. I just double checked it. Oh, see. So, okay. So yeah. now we need to remove replenish off of Mac. I know, right? <laughs> if they're going to have him running around the mall or convention. Yeah. So the last changes that I wanted to hit on were the most controversial changes so far. The SMG changes. The, all the SMGs got touched. <laughs> the D40 LMP and the Knight got buffed. Everything else got readjusted. I'm not going to say they got nerfed. They got readjusted to a little bit more where SMGs should be, in my opinion. And a lot of people are very upset with how the SMGs are performing in the game. Me, personally... I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I like the SMG changes. I like the direction they went with them. I like the idea that like, if you want to play a very up close, intimate, uh, you know, capture the point, like whether it be strike out or King of the Hill, you have a weapon specifically designed for that. If you want to play a little bit further back. And if you want to play a little bit more reserved, you have a SMG for that. If you are someone that's going to try to get in, in and out real quick and be able to burn people down at range or up close, you have an SMG for that. Like you have different SMGs to do different jobs. And I like that idea a lot. That's where the identity thing comes in. And I like being able to go into a situation that's like, okay, I'm going to play Mac and I'm going to be super overly aggressive on the point. And I'm not going to worry about ADSing. So I'm going to go with the objection and I'm just going to rip everybody down that I can. Not going to be able to hit them at range. I want them to push the point because I want them to, as soon as they get to the point, it's possible to you. I, I want to down them and kill them before their body hits the floor, you know? Yeah. And, and it, I really liked the, the SMG changes and I like the direction that they went with them, but there's a lot of people that don't. What do you guys think about them? I mean, they're still ripping ass, dude. Yeah. I, 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 I think the SMGs are, I think, I think the SMGs are fine. I, mean, like, I, I think they're all good. There's moments, like, there's moments, you know, that you're like, oh shit, I feel like I could have had that guy, you know, because, you know, maybe the bullets or maybe you just hold the button trigger down too long instead of bursting your shots or whatever. But I think the problem that everybody's having with SMGs right now is just like, they're getting burned down, you know, and they're not used to it. And second, this is just the first set of weapon changes. Like, this isn't, they haven't even touched the ARs or all the other weapons. Yeah. You know, they're going to like, they're going to, they're going to, I feel like they're going to touch them all to where it's going to be more balanced. Because like right now, there are moments where you're just getting burnt down with an AR. If you're running an SMG shotgun only top character, like Chalk, for example, yeah, a uh, glitch or something like that. So like, there's moments like, just no matter what you do, you're just like, God, I can't get close enough. You know, I just can't get close enough because like right now people are playing back. You know, yeah. if they have any arms because they know they're like, well, I can just burn you down. Or guess what? I'm holding the Hydra, so you're gonna hop around this corner and I'm gonna three time you with this thing. You're gonna die. Is you know, there's just there's moments so I can see where they're like getting upset, but at the same time, guys. <laughs> gotta get used to playing all the weapons. Yeah. You, you gotta, gotta learn like not to play short. You gotta learn to play short range, medium range, wrong long range, like learn all the weapons. Like that's how you get better at a game for sure. Like doing things that put you out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Well not only that, but like with the SMGs being as accurate as they were for so long, it started turning brain dead. Now all the people that ran the SMGs brain dead and was dropping 20, 30, 40 downs in a game can no longer do that because they actually have to think about positioning and movement and, and cut. Yeah, and exactly. Weapon, yeah. weapon spread and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then <laughs> a lot of things that people forget is like, oh, if I need to shoot people at range, I wonder if there's something in my pocket that I can use that can, oh, the, mm. I can three tap somebody with the revolver still, huh? I didn't ever think about that. It's like, dude, you can take pop shots with the revolver while you're moving up in, into different covers to close that gap and then burn that person down with the SMG. Like, you have to think smarter and play smarter. And nobody, it seems that the majority of the community doesn't want to kind of step outside of their comfort zone if we're like. Yep. And, and it's funny because you see like, oh, people are like, wow, these DMRs are really good. The DMRs yes, have, they've always, always been yeah. good. 
you're Always. just not getting burnt down with the LMPX across the map anymore. That's, That's the difference. Right. Yep. Or the SLC. Yeah. You know, like, you're just not getting these people that are just constantly running SMGs that are able to shoot you that far. Yeah. Now you're able to like hit shots because their bullet spread's not that good or they're too far. Yeah, they're barely damage peppering you. Yeah. yeah. The damage fall off is only it's like, like yeah, challenge that again. Right. And you're taking 36. Pop, pop. 30, 48 headshot. Like, I mean, like, whoo. yeah. <clears throat> and, and that's the thing, man. It's like that, that feels good. It feels good being able to be in a situation to where you're like, okay, I have a DMR here, regardless of whatever DMR it is, they're going to have to poke out and take pop shots. I can take pop shots back, but when I take pop shots with my DMR, <laughs> it's going to hurt, you know, you don't feel it. Yeah. Instead of just getting burnt down by this SMG, like where it was like no competition. Yeah. And I, and I've seen in just our playing with it together. It's like, okay, I know that let's say dirt Lord's behind me. He's got the Mark four with Saint. I know that he is going to have more range and more damage at that range. So what I'm going to do is whenever this dude pops out and peaks, we're going to both shoot him and then I'm going to push up as soon as he goes yep. back into cover while the person behind me, the teammate that's behind me, does what what the teammate does and <laughs> covers you while you're moving. Like you can't be a one man army anymore. No. Uh, you can uh, try, but there's still moments. Like, oh, you'll yeah, have for moment. sure. You know, there's moments. <laughs> but it's not it's not every play like it was before. Right. It's not uh, consistent. It's yeah. not like every game I'm about to do I'm about to get a four piece right here. Watch this. Yeah, exactly. So I picked the LNPX. Watch this, guys. I'm about to run down <laughs> windward middle lane. I'm about to get a four piece. Watch. Yeah. yeah. The last time you played. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So but all in all, I think the SMG changes are good. I think that in the next section that we get to, there is some mention or some talk about like further SMG changes and stuff. But that's another thing that people need to keep in mind. It's like the weapon tweaks are not done. So yeah. like and that doesn't mean that they're gonna be reverted. It just means that like when the rest of the weapons get their identities, they get their ranges, they get their damages, then that may cause tweaks to happen to other other weapons that have already been tweaked before like this isn't like a first pass done type of balancing right. situation this is something that's going to be dynamic and continuously changing until the weapons feel unique from one another have their own specific identities and play styles and are very well balanced to where any weapon can be viable it just depends on your preference and your play style as an individual yeah and people honestly just need, again, like we just said, just need to learn to get out of their comfort zone. Like, I get it that you're used to playing SMGs and like Call of Duty, you know, playing in team deathmatch and you run an MP5, the best one in the game. But like, you learn how to play all these weapons in this game, you're going to be a very good player overall. Like, just average and just an overall averagely good player. Yeah. You know, just being able to run the DMRs, being able to practice those shots, you'll start to learn. Like how long you need to lead your shots before you know they're going to start hitting, and like you just start learning things when you're doing different things. If you're just doing the same thing, the same SMG play over and over and over and over, how are you expect to learn something? How are you? Ex what are you learning from pulling off the same play and successfully pulling the same play over and over? Yeah. You don't. You know, you learn more when you're running something that you're uncomfortable with, that you're not used to, that you're not you hate using. Like for a long time. Like something I don't like running is shotguns. I don't like running shotguns. I will most likely avoid shotguns as long as I can. And if I can and I know I'll run an SMG better, I'll run an SMG better. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, and I've gotten better because, like, one of my, I freak out. You know, that's my example. Like, shotguns, I freak out with shotguns. Like, just close range shotgun stuff, I just don't, I just flick everywhere. So I whip all my shots and yeah, miss. I panic. Miss. Yeah, I yeah. panic. Yeah, and that's my problem. Like, well, but then I'll run an SMG and I won't because I'm comfortable with the SMG. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like, I know I, for a fact if I'm running this uh, objection and this person comes out of this doorway, I'm most likely going to burn the living hell out of them. Yeah. You know, shotguns, I'm just, again, I'm scared a lot of the time. So, like, they'll hop out and I'll just, I'll just, my camera is yeah. everywhere. You're <laughs> <Be> like, ah! <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, and then Griffin's watching because he's dead, and he watched me do all that, and he was like, what was that? 
I'm yeah, like, Google. You know, yeah, you're like, you don't want to know. You know, you don't want to know how I felt over here. But yeah, right. yeah, it's just being. It's just you have to. You have to constantly adapt to all the changes, man. And again, you're right. All these weapons are not even changing yet. So when all these weapons changes, for example, dude, when they hopefully nerf the Hydra. Yeah. Hopefully when they nerf the Hydra, <laughs> that yeah, would be yeah. a huge one. Because people are going to be so livid when that happens. Yeah, They're going to probably run to either the HR or the Sahara, which I like the Sahara a lot. So they may end up not nerfing that because the fire rate with that, ever since they balanced that, that thing's a burner. Yeah. So yeah. there's just, you know, there's just going to be every weapon are going to get touched. Hopefully all the weapons get touched at some point that like for the better or for the worse, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. One of my favorite things, dude, is you do not see as much crowd spamming anymore. Oh, I know, right? Nowhere near. Yeah. yeah. You don't. Or uh, even the, the jumping around the corners. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and you know, they have to upgrade their, their weapon, the, their yeah. SMG or whatever. But, like, again, a lot of people are upset at how the SMGs are running. So, like. Yeah, now they'll just wait behind the corner. Right, they'll just yeah. wait for you to for come it. around it, and it's like yeah. ah, it's so close, and then they're and just then like, the "Whoa!" Fucking scorch yeah. steps out. Yeah, yeah, and just, you're dead. You're dead. Yeah, yeah. Shit. <laughs> but also to your point, uh, though, Garbo, it's like if you if you consistently run the same weapons all the time, stepping outside of your comfort zone and learning those weapons. That don't only help you be a better player in different situations where you may pick a weapon up or you may play a different character that has access to it, but you know exactly what the fire rate for the D3DI is if you get really good with it. So you Mm -hmm. know that you can time your movements out between whenever they take shots at you. You you can use that to your advantage 100%. And that challenge it. Exactly. So, and that's yeah. something that, absolutely, in my opinion, is invaluable information. Yeah. So, it is. that's what yeah. makes you angry about the servers. Is you're like, I know how long that gun takes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the servers sometimes it's like, no, what? Yeah. Immediately kill you again, Hydra man. Like sometimes you don't even know. You're just down. You're like, what? Mm-hmm. Like what happened there? And you're like, well, I had no damage. Had hy- yeah, that dude had the Hydra. He three tapped you, but three seconds ago you didn't know nothing about it. Yeah, <laughs> you're like what? Yeah, what? <laughs> so. Tally said she agrees with you, Garbo. She said for her, it's the patience of knowing when to shoot and wait to hit the next direct shot that gets me. Choosing when to sh- uh, body shot, um, body shoot it or headshot it. It's crazy. So, like, and I get that. Like, it, and that's the thing about shotguns. Like, it's supposed to be that idea of knowing when to pounce, uh, knowing when to shoot, knowing when to peek, knowing when to reload. But like, with replenish, with roll reload, with other other outlying factors, shotguns and rogue company feel like they're more oppressive than they actually should be, and that's the reason why. You know. Yeah. So. When you're also running people characters that have replenish, it kind of makes you have a little more courage to run the shotguns. Yeah, it's like you can miss five, but if you get that one down, you got your ammo back. You're like, ah, yeah, yeah, right. You know, like, something like there's it encourages you <laughs> a little bit. I think that's why I think all almost all the characters with shotguns almost have replenish. I think they all do. Yeah, I think that might be wise because they're running shotguns, but that you know. Again, it's it's kind of it's enticing, you know. Yeah. It's it's encouraging you. It's trying to like, hey, if you run shotguns, there's a chance that you can get this perk, and you don't have to reload ever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. So next up, we're going to do something a little bit different. So for Jared Judications, this is going to kind of bleed into the community section a little bit here. So Jared did a and a over on Reddit and I've cut out some of the, I didn't c- cut out all the Q and A's of course, because there's a ton of them, but I cut a good chunk of them out just for us to discuss on the, on the pod. But here I will say, I'll go ahead and read exactly what he posted over on Reddit as our launching off point. So this is what was posted. Hello, friends. Firstly, I would like to apologize on behalf of the team in regards to all of the issues that many of you are facing with the new release. 
We were pretty devastated ourselves by what has been going on and have worked hard to put out a hot fix this morning. Let me know if you guys are continuing to see issues. So let's get into it. Unfortunately, I haven't been nearly as active in here as I should. Things have been rather busy and we've been working hard on both current and future releases. Candidly, Reddit is a bit more involved in comparison to Discord or Twitter, at least more so than I'm able to maintain as equally. I apologize for that. I do want to work with the Reddit community as you are all just as passionate as us devs and the other community hubs. My time away and the time between patches have seemed to have shaken faith, trust, and dehumanized interactions and perspectives. So let's fix that. In this post, I want you to hit me with feedback and questions, and today I'll do my best to answer as many as possible. No questions, no question goes unanswered. You guys deserve at least that much respect and deserved to be heard. We are all here in this community because we love the game, so being able to have good, civil, and healthy conversation is important. I'll kick off with a question that I'm sure some of you have. Where and how in the hell did you arrive at these design decisions? With this question, I'm assuming it's in regards to some of the changes that have been challenging for us and a part of our community. When I was first approached by leadership and the former design lead uh, to take on the responsibility, my first step was to have discussions on what uh, we should do for Roco to keep it growing, thriving, and to be the long-lasting game it deserves to be. We love Roco dearly, and we want it to succeed. Talking with Scott, Brad, other former designers, diehard devs who play every day, the community looking at months slash years of data and so on. The one big thing that we landed on and wanted to address in the game was depth and identity. Our intentions were to always have characters to have strong identities and our weapons to give unique play styles. Over the years, that intention has gotten muddied as we had struggled to really clarify what our game's core was to be about. Was it tactical? Was it casual? Arcadey? Uh, was it what is our game? It was time to start working towards that direction, and it's going to be difficult. Change like this is a scary thing to do, and something that we attempted at solving previously but didn't succeed. Speed, speed and toughness comes to mind. It's scary because it challenges players' comfort zones and forces players uh, and forces players endure the turbulence and having to adapt to changes. Candidly, Roko was sitting relatively untended for a very for a long time and the core has stagnated. Uh, the will that I carry on from our previous leads was to fix this core and put Roko on some kind of direction that would bring back our original desire of having depth and identity in our game. These aren't easy or frivolous decisions to make. They are very hard and carry a lot of weight. As such, we look at the weight of data, how our players are responding to the changes, and how we respond to the changes as well. All game studios do this. We are just way more transparent of our intentions and have this and how the sausage is made. I have been and will continue to be clear and transparent with our decisions for Roco. All you have to do is ask. Discussions can and should be had. Maybe newer, better solutions spring from it or we make compromises. This is a joint effort, so ask away, give me feedback directly. So what are your questions? So the first question here comes from Diligent Sympathy. Do you guys plan on returning Mythic skins to the event passes? And Jared said, yes, I want Mythics on all of my guns. Just hang in there. Which a lot of people brought this up whenever the event pass drop. It's like, oh, we only got three skins and no Mythic. And it's like, it's 35 levels. The battle pass or the yeah. event pass is going to run for six weeks. You can't realistically think that every six weeks we're going to get an event pass and every six weeks we're going to get a new mythic, right? Like that would be great. That would be like, that would be amazing. Yeah, would be, but we, yeah. we got a lot of bugs and stuff to fix. Yeah, so. we yeah. a lot more problems than that. Why yeah. are we worried about Maybe later? Mythic? Yeah, exactly. So why are we sitting here complaining about mythic skins? And stuff like that when there are way more worse problems about the game. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's funny. That's, you see what kids or people are more worried about at the end of the day. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. 
But that's why I wanted to drop this at the top, and I'm sure it comes back up in some of these other questions at some point. But yeah, they uh, they do want to put more mythics in the game. They do have the desire to put more mythics in the game. It's just it didn't happen with the Eternal Conflict drop. Possibly in the next one. Possibly. Who knows? Who knows? We got mythics whenever they did the Walking Dead stuff. Like you never know. We got mythics when they did the Rambo stuff. You never know when mythics are going to drop into the game. So if that's what you're playing Rogue Company for, just be on the lookout for it. You know, right? <clears throat> it's not going to be as fast as Fortnite. You know, Fortnite's just constantly spitting out content. Like this game is not a AAA game. Yeah, exactly. It's, right? They're going. They're going. Everything's slower. <laughs> yeah absolutely so next up Izzy for Shizzy said will we ever get kill quips back to the way they used to be I miss hearing weak like American drink Jared said first blood and multi kill quips are coming back I wanted them back and worked with our audio designer to get them hooked back up so that's one thing that a lot of people have been talking about I never pay attention to the quips like I don't even like you guys know I'm like zoned out in La La Land, ninety yeah. percent of the time when we're playing, right? Like I, I mean, yeah. I'm over here mouth breathing. So like, Ooh. I never even noticed that the quips weren't in the game anymore. Never noticed it. Yeah, like I'm oh, too- I, one that he specifically said. I do notice. He said, "Wait, like American drink." That was Dima's. Yeah, yeah. Like when Demon would kill, I do remember when, hearing that. Yeah, when Demon would kill somebody, he'd be like, Wait, "Like American yeah. drink." I remember that. Like, I didn't realize they removed that though until like this was brought up. Yeah, I know. And like, and that's my <laughs> thing. Like, I don't ever pay attention to what the characters say in game. Like, if you dropped a line and told me to tell me what Rogue says it, there's a fifty fifty shot that I'm going to get it right. You know. I don't know. I don't know about that. Wow. Yeah, well that that's different. <laughs> that's a whole different that's a whole different thing, you know. Uh so next up TNT sixteen said here back in twenty twenty one, High Res said that a new co op game in the Roco universe will release in twenty twenty two, but nothing has been announced yet. Is there any info on that? I love the new random old season music playlist change and was wondering if we will get an option to change to a specific lobby music rather than a random one in a future release or in a future update. Will we get any more short event passes like the current one between big seasons, or is this an exception? Any plans on adding another arms dealer event to the game? Uh, No info at the time for the uh, co-op game. If we ever want to do a PVE part of our game, I would desperately want to fix our AI behavior first. The bots are a bit subpar at the moment. Music selector, yes, and a future release. I also want to listen to my favorite track all the time. Event passes are the new norm. 35 rewards every six weeks instead of 50 every 12 weeks. Maybe, and this is an arms dealer, maybe I definitely value more narrative events first, though. Need to finish the story arc. To be fair, they do need to finish the story. Yeah, I agree, right? I know that's like not like what we do on this, but to be Who's fair. The traitor? Yeah. <clears throat> right. <laughs> How long's that been? I want to know. I'm sick of hearing people ask about it. I know, right? For well, real. I, I'm to this point, I want to know who did it. Yeah, right. You know, so like, I can answer them when they ask. I was like, yeah. like well, it was this person, you know? Yeah. Next up, Solitary Star said, how does the matchmaking system work? I feel as if it intentionally gives a team of players with good stats that one player who has about half or even a quarter of their abilities to play, it feels intentional, even if it might not be. Could we see a melee rework? I think it could be cool to see a power swing with each uh, melee having its own unique one. Melees now feel somewhat jank. Sometimes you'll lunge and hit them but not kill them. I'll throw melees that miss and still kill people, things like that. I love melee, but if you like identity, power swings could do that. Will we ever see new interactives in maps? Things like tutorial turrets that shoot breakable surfaces and maps other than breach and possibly elevators. I feel like a map with these unique features could provide new opportunities for players. 
Does bulletproof make any difference in the amount of bullets it takes to kill? If so, I think the difference for rare, epic, and legendary is negligible, if non-existent. Maybe they could be buffed on the condition of an increased price. Could we ever see legacy battle passes and legacy events? Uh, still... Still not, a, uh, this is what Jared had to say, still not quite equipped to answer matchmaking questions. It'll take a bit before I can make time for that. Uh, potentially, I do want our me uh, melee functioning better, and your suggestion is neat. We'll see what we can manage. I do like interactables on the maps. They can make some difference of requiring that one more shot from an AR, which can mean life or death. I'm keeping an eye on things since we've removed yeah. speed and toughness. Legacy stuff, not at this time. So one thing that I've brought up in the past and one thing that I've also brought up to the developers myself directly was the idea of dynamic maps. Having maps that have multiple lanes that can only be accessed by triggering specific events, whether it be something that could happen in the first round of a game of demolition or the last round of, in a game of demolition or causing ramps to lower or raise, causing zip lines to be cut or reconnected, things like that could absolutely help improve not only the playability, but replayability of some of these maps that we've had in the game since they've been dropped. And I know that they're working on reworking some of the maps like High Castle and canals things like that but like if there's some way to dynamically interact with the map to where it gives you almost a secondary objective to either be able to a defend from this thing happening from the enemy team or attacking this specific thing to change up the flow of a map could be huge in a tactical based shooter you know yep <clears throat> so and the melee stuff, like there's a ton that they could do with melee. And I think that like if they uh, really pulled these melee weapons apart and like redesigned the functionality and to have different melees that did different things and not just be a combat axe every time that we play the game and one hit yes. downs with it. Yes. It's cheesy. I feel like if they would just remove the throwing mechanic itself out, that would solve everything i think that i think that that's a good idea and i think that they should create a character specifically for melee like have that character a melee character that does their primary shoot functions as a melee swing but have the ability to throw out whatever it is that they're swinging or whatever they have access to and that be like if you want that gameplay experience this is that's the, the character road. yeah exactly yeah right yeah, I agree. Because that's what it comes down to. Like a person can be really unskilled with the with guns, but if their server latency is perfect, they can. I've seen it. They've just down people with a melee weapon every time. It's a one hit shot. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Like if people are not if people are not accurate with their guns, they miss all kind of whiff 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 whiff. And then, like, you get so close, they can just throw an axe and, and down. The you. axe comes out. Yeah. Yeah, it just downs you. And you're like, wow. Yeah. Like, I literally just watched you miss every shot up to this point, dude. Yeah. Like, are we kidding? You know, and that's, it's, it sucks. And, dude, it, you're right. It's the combat axe. Like, that's the biggest one. Right behind with the katana. Just because, like, those are the two that will one hit down you once you fully upgrade them. Like, yeah. it just, it happens every time. Exactly. Like, Sooner rather than later, hopefully, yeah. right? <laughs> yes, I mean, if you, it be, I mean, it makes sense to have them because, like, when you swing your fist, they only take like forty or whatever. Yeah, and then like you upgrade them, dude. You can hit people with that thing for like sixty-five or like seventy. Like the claymore is just ridiculous. You hit somebody, you're like you're running. They're down to fifteen HP. You're like, oh my god, what did I just get hit with? You get hit by a sword. Yeah, a big, a big old a Viking claymore, like right. Whew. <laughs> but yeah dude i think throwing out that would be a cool just make a row that does that that'd be way cooler than everybody because like what, what's the sense of everybody only certain rogues like if you get mastery can you pick any uh melee weapon after you master them all yeah mm. oh shit okay yeah. i didn't mm. know that all yeah. right well that changes everything that's when we were playing those games last night on uh wanted and you had like three of the people on the enemy team, the runway, no, Ronan, no, no, no. and 
Yeah. Yeah, they all had axes, and it's oh stupid. yeah. And Ronan has a katana. That's yeah. right. I didn't even notice, but you're right. That makes see that's bonkers, dude. Yeah. Well, it's, shit. Um, but if they fix that, just revert that change. Yeah. I know people will fucking rage, but oh well, because dude, that's that's like you don't. One thing you don't want to do with your game is find ways where you're bending, like bending the rules or breaking them in a way and throwing melee weapons and one downing people i feel is just that's rule breaking in yeah. a game you know if if we're having that why do we not have one shot head downs no matter what yeah exactly right like if we're gonna do that you know what i mean we might as well just go ahead and do that and i would be happier because then i'll be like well that dude's got fucking got some shots yeah right <laughs> And then so. somebody just getting lucky on the axe throw. Yeah. <laughs> or just because they know they're going to kill me on the axe throw because they can't hit their shots from mid range. Like, <sighs> oh, I know. Yeah. Look, ludicrous. Oh, I know you know. You hate it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, I'm the one talking about it, but you're the one that's like, oh. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, next up here, mod 333 Dib said first. And thank you for doing this. I appreciate you engaging with the community. I know matchmaking is on the list already, but I had one match yesterday where every single teammate on both teams stayed and had over 3,000 damage in a five-round strikeout match. It was glorious. It feels like magic that it happened, but matches like that remind me of why I love this game. Having an experience close to that most days would be just chef's kiss. A suggestion can we get a melee only mode or melee and uh, limited gadgets at least? Bludgeoning someone with a sledgehammer in this game is a true joy. Can oh. we get <laughs> can we get quote unquote play ranked games out of dailies? Solo cure here, and I hate the wait times and its matchmaking seems even more spotty. Can you fix STD? I understand taking a life. I understand taking a life from the team you're helping. But it's a crazy disadvantage to be spawned with only a pistol and your ability uh, on cooldown. I get wanting to get us into the action right away, but it'll take me less than five seconds in the shop. And if you're already taking a life, at least let me spawn in fresh with everything ready to contribute and, you know, save the day. Thanks again. Uh, Jared said, I do want to introduce fun arcade uh, BS modes like that or gun game. Capture the flag. Who knows? Quick play is a great cue for it, I feel. I've heard that a, I've heard that a couple of times. I can look into removing that from the pool. Ideally, our dailies should be a bit more simple. We are definitely looking at improving our logic around reconnects and mid-match joining, which is the core of the issues you're encountering. I do want to make sure our heroes are decked out ready to kick ass. So at least they're looking at the save the day functions. Hopefully get that kind of smoothed out a little bit. And then I haven't seen ranked games in dailies. I've never noticed that they had play ranked games in the daily challenges or the daily whatever. So I had one like last week. Yeah. Okay. I was like, so, win so many ranked matches. Okay. I was like, roll. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've never paid any attention to that. And it would be cool if they would put, like, remember back in the day, whenever they would do limited time modes over the weekend, and it would be like this one game mode only. And like, there would be people hopping in and trying it out. You had snipers only, you know, you had, um, you know, extraction was in that pool. It would be cool if they had gun game or if they had, you know, melees only or shotguns only or whatever yeah. in that and, and just have it as, you know, as a traditional LTM for the weekend and just don't count the statistics. Don't count anything in that match. Just let it be a fun, stupid run around and have a good time. You know, silly goes time. Exactly. Next up, Kiridu. Kuridu said, what metrics do you guys use to gather and gauge player feedback and responses to changes? Do you only base feedback off of Reddit and Discord? I, uh, if, for example, people complain about a certain thing, how do you know if this is just a vocal minority that doesn't represent the majority of the player base? This is what Jared had to say about that, and I think that this is very interesting. 
We talk with and observe Reddit, Twitter, and Discord. We also compile we also compile and crunch on hard data that that we pull every update. Lastly, we talk to a large a large collective of content creators and TOs that have their own communities to get as much outreach as possible. Literally every change we do gets shown first to the board members and many key creators that have large communities. The combination of all those things paint pictures of, is this a vocal minority? Is this trending positively negatively? Is this sentiment backed by data? It feeds into one big abstract formula to help drive our internal discussions and evaluations. And, and that's exactly, to me, that's how it should be. They're looking on all of the social media to see what people are saying, but they're also looking at the actual in-game statistics. So if you have, you know, a lot of loud people on social media that are saying that the SMG changes suck, but if they pull the data and see that there's no fluctuation in play rate for the SMGs, that the win rate win for the rate, SMG, yeah. yeah, the the down percentage, the know. the hit percentages... Then you also like, I'm part of the creator program. Anytime anybody comes in with feedback for me, whether I agree with it or disagree with it, it is noted and it goes, it goes into whatever feedback I give to the developers from my perspective and from my community's perspective. If somebody comes in and says that the S the SMGs are dog shit and they can give me a legitimate reason as to why they dislike the SMG changes. And we can have a conversation about like, this is my experience. This is your experience. Have you tried this? Have you tried that? Have you tried this? Have you tried that? And we can like, Back and forth. If there's something that I dislike, the community loves, and they come in and they're like, we don't know why you dislike that. Try this or try that or tweak with this, tweak that just to see how it feels. I would, I would, I gladly give my time up to try these things out to give, you know, whatever it is, the benefit of the doubt if I dislike it. That's why it's so important that, like, whenever people come in with feedback, saying that the game is ass. And just leaving it at that, <laughs> it doesn't help anything. Why? Yeah. Why is the game like? Explain to me what you Maybe dislike. Both. A yeah, and then let's talk through it. I'm not just gonna say okay, like yeah, the game's ass. And then whenever yeah, Jared, the yeah, He's whenever sorry. Jared's like, hey, what does your community think about the game? I'm like, well, so and so thinks that the game's ass. Why? <laughs> I don't know. They just That's think the game was ass. I mean, yeah, it's so. the ass. Yeah. 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 I asked them why they thought it was ass, and they just replied and said, it's just ass. I don't know. So, like, give constructive feedback, whether you don't like it, whether you do like it, whether you're indifferent about it, weird interactions that you've had, things that come up that you don't think about. I've got a video that's already coming out whenever this releases. For Tally, it's different. But... It's about gunsmith and it's about the idea of gunsmith, something that I was sitting around thinking about and about you just check the video out about gunsmith. Like it's a whole thing with, with like my thoughts and opinions on this one specific perk and how much that one perk changes everything up. I created the video. The video is going to go out into the world. Hopefully people will watch the video and either negatively or positively comment on the video and say, you're wrong or you're right. Here's what I think about it. This is my two cents on it. And I take all that feedback in and that may sway my opinion on it. That may, that may allow me to look at this particular topic in a completely different light and say, you know, I didn't really think about it like that. You know what I mean? That, that's what about why the, when we were playing and you're talking about fixer with the armor. Yeah. Somebody was like, "Oh, you just pick Umbra Va." Exactly. Like, what? Yeah, yeah. Hop in there. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. Exactly. Know that exactly, right? And that's why, like, I am not too big of a person to admit when I'm wrong about something. I'll be the first person to admit that I'm wrong about something, especially if someone's like, "No, no, no." Let's hop into a custom game. I'm gonna pick Umbra, and you're gonna pick. Fixer, and I'm going to show you how this works. Okay, bet. Do it. And it's like, huh, mine changed. There's one, there's two perfect counters for Fixer in the game. Do I think that there should be more? Absolutely. But it's not as broken as it seems on paper when there are two counters for the devotion umbro combination thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So, 
But that's why feedback is so important. That's why, you know, I always ask in my videos, hey guys, let me know in the comments below what you think about insert video topic here, because I take all that feedback in and I, I filter it through and I give my feedback on what's going on, my personal opinion, and the, the mass community that, that we've built over here's feedback on everything. And that's just how it is. That's how it should be, in my opinion. So it's important. Feedback makes changes. Exactly. Exactly. Not the game's ass. <laughs> yeah. Damn, I could say that all day. Well, what makes the game ass? Servers make the game ass. Hydra oh, makes the game ass. Latency. Like, they're just rubber banding. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's plenty, man. That's all like, ass. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. all that's ass. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, not a bit of that I find enjoyable. <laughs> and and Tally's got a good comment here. Constructive criticism is great when done right. People at times, especially in the Roco community, just like the sound of their own voice and complain without no end solution. Exactly. And any time that I've complained about something, and I've brought this up on several broadcasts, if there's something that I've disliked about the game, I've offered solutions. Most of the time, multiple solutions on how this could be changed or tweaked or made better, in my opinion. If you're going to dislike something about the game, we'll take SMG changes, for example, then explain the SMG changes that you would like. Explain why it doesn't feel good. Explain the experience that you're having. If you drop into a game and everybody on the enemy team's running Hydras and you're running the objection, it's not going to be a good time for you. Mm -mm. It's just not. So... It's important to give that feedback in a very constructive way. And you can say that the game's ass, but tell me why. Yeah. Don't say the game's ass because you ran, uh, got two downs and wanted, and you ran the objection. Yeah, right. I mean, one of the most open maps. Like, don't make excuses, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, if it's a legitimate reason, be legitimate. But, like, if it's just because you're having a bad game experience, it, Bad gaming experience because of like your decisions. Yeah. Then and that's on you. And it's definitely not a good idea to upload clips to YouTube where you're purposefully making the guns look bad and mm. then copying the Rogue Company Twitter page and the developers on that to try to prove a point that is actually a false narrative. That's not a good direction either. And then in the comment section, saying that you absolutely spoofed all those shots on purpose to make it look bad. Maybe don't do that. Maybe, yeah. Why would you do that? Maybe you'll be taken seriously if you don't do stupid shit like that. So, you know. Next up here, soup took my name. Surrender button. The devs oh. feel the surrender button is in a good place. I started, when I first read that, I'm like, on the menu screen? No. <laughs> I started out playing 6v6 TDM where the game hardly ever surrenders. But after forced crossplay, I moved to strikeout where it seems like games surrender for no reason at all. And sometimes it's hard to get in complete games. I've mentioned in other threads where it seems to be a mixed bag, but I get frustrated over the quitting. I'm curious how the devs see surrender. Jared said, I, it's definitely in a weird place as what you're experiencing is player driven. We want to make surrender available in the circumstances where appropriate, but it seems like some players are a bit more trigger happy in regards. We'll have to revisit this at some point. I understand how this person thinks. Yeah. Because you could be winning. Yes. And people will, will surrender. And you're yeah. like, what? Or you be winning. And the person leaves. And yeah. you're like, what is going on? Like, I don't understand. Like, I don't, I guess maybe they're just having a poor gaming experience. Yeah. Or they're the one that's getting shot down. But like, don't do that. That yeah. is so crucial for your team. Like, first off, I hate seeing that surrender thing appear on my screen. Yeah, I know, right? If oh, it's, oh, did one of us do that? Because yeah. if not, yeah, exactly. fuck that. If, if it's legitimate, yeah. If it, again, most time it has to be one of us too. Like again, if it's if I'm just playing CV six v six and we're twenty five twelve and you're surrendering because you're not having a good time, 
what? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, come on, man. Like, practice. Sit behind a corner. Stop get better, rushing. You'll get better. Whatever you're doing. Like, I don't know what you're doing. I'm not paying attention to you. I'm 6v6 yeah. and just mowing people down. Like, change up whatever you're doing. Yeah, try the opposite. Yeah, yeah exactly. Quit running up in there, dude. Yeah, and you get those. We'll have these stop. nights, man, where they'll just game after game. Yeah. Yeah. We Every can't time. finish a game because the other teams, yeah. one person leaves and they're like, nope. And now, yeah, then that might be matchmaking at the end yeah. of the day, but. Yeah. But yeah. still, though. Oh, so, yeah, it drives me bonkers. Dude. Yeah. It, it, We've had it like just cool. play all night, get through two games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Every yeah. other game was surrendered. Yeah. Well, I mean, even with this person, it's like he's talking about like he's playing solo. Like that happens in a horrible time too, because like people will just left leave left and right. Like spend yeah. less time pressing the pause button and surrendering, and spend more time aiming your damn gun. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I don't think I've ever played a solo game that somebody didn't leave. Yeah, exactly. Right. I don't think or I've ever try played to one. surrender because yeah. like that it's bad. It's bad. Yeah. So, ooh, I understand how this person feels, yeah. and I hope that they can find some formula to fix this. Because, again, I feel like the player count would be so much higher if, like, small things like this would be altered. Yeah. So I've got a couple of things on that, but Tally said here, I've come into games and not one bullet has been shot, and the surrender's been triggered. I don't know if it's players <laughs> just giving up, but it doesn't give players a good experience if they're willing to give up so soon into a match before a winner can be determined. I've come from winning games to losing because of surrenders and end up losing the match because of it. Yeah. Because it's discouraging. Yeah. First it off. Is. Yeah. It, you see that and your whole team's like, what? Yeah. Like, are we doing bad? Like every time I see it, I look up at the score. Yeah. And see we're winning or we're losing. And yeah. uh, if we're winning, I swear to God, I'm muted, but I am raging over yeah. here. But I swear to God, if you don't fucking stop pressing the pause button and hit surrender. <laughs> right. I'm like, well, what yeah, are you doing? Who that? did that? Why don't you just yeah. leave then? Yeah. yeah. What are you doing? Like, well, God. <laughs> here, here's my thing on surrender take surrender out of every game mode except for ranked. And then. Go in there and fix the backfill system that they have where it doesn't cause lag spikes. Then go in there and add an option into all the queuable modes except for ranked for people to leave the game and go back to the lobby. And then allow yeah. rolling lobbies for public matches to happen where it doesn't actively search out for a matchmaking, you know, queue at that point. Because if you can have players drop in and out at will and it not interrupt the, the gaming experience like it currently does with the stutters, and then people that are leaving games have to close their game out to leave the game, then fire yeah. it right back up just to get into another match that they're inevitably going to leave. No penalty. Like, exactly. And since they've made it very apparent that they don't want to have penalties in there, especially for public matches, then make the process easier for people to leave that don't want to that don't want to be in the game anymore, yeah. remove the surrender button completely. That way you don't have to deal with that whatsoever. And, and then just streamline the process of getting people back and getting new people into the match. That's all you have to do at the end of the yep. day. That is all you have to do. And if they had persistent rolling lobbies set up for everything, except for ranked to where, when the game ends, if you're in a six V six TDM it's going to cue you into another game immediately unless you choose to leave that game. That's how you fix it. That's Can we load I mean, people in on the plane too? Exactly. Not when I'm in a gunfight? Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I've never played a multiplayer game where I couldn't return to the lobby. Exactly. And see, and that's the problem. It's like, Whenever people leave the game and then they're like new people, the backfills working and they're bringing people into the game to backfill it. Why is there like this weird connection thing that happens that causes the game to stutter Every like time. crazy? Yeah. Twice when they load in and when they pick a character, why does that have to yep. exist? Like the surrender option shouldn't be in there for quick play, public demolition, public strikeout, wingman, none of that shit. It shouldn't exist. 
If people don't want to play it, then just let them leave if you're not going to penalize them. It's stupid. Yeah, it is. It's pretty simple. Yeah. It is. To be fair, in the backfield, like people that are coming in on 6v6 as well, like there's people that are launching in and they can't buy nothing their first round. Yeah. Yeah. So they they literally start off with a pistol, no Mm -hmm. perks, no weapon. Just get shit. You're like, what? So they leave. Yeah. Yeah. Here comes another one. Like, cause, <laughs> never yeah, in cycle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, what are we doing? And the reason, <laughs> and the reason that it's like that is because none of the high res games have rolling lobbies. None of the high res games have backfill in them, except for Rogue Company. Like that is literally the only high res game that has a backfill type system that injects players into a match in progress. Their servers and their system. Across the all titles isn't built to support that functionality. You kind Wait, of I got like, something too. I didn't mean to interrupt you. But if I'm for if we're playing together and yeah. someone crashes, don't load somebody else in. Yeah. Yeah. Let our teammate load back in. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Why is Let that, that happen. That used to work. Yeah. But then it just went away. Have like a, have like a minute. Cooldown or a two minute cooldown, like where the person let has me load change, back in, re, yeah, to load back in or rejoin yeah. if like their system crashed. Like, I didn't leave, my like, game crashed, yeah, right. Like, give them like a, an actual, like, small time to back fill themselves in. It used to work, yeah, <clears throat> right, yeah. So, uh, Tally says, especially since there's no penalty to drop out of a game, I don't even know why they surrender in games. If they don't like it, they can just exactly like, and that's exactly what should happen. In my opinion, if people don't want to stay, they're just going to continuously ruin the game experience for every yeah. single lobby that they get into. The AFK player standing yeah. at the back with the bomb yeah, just, and knows. Yeah. Knows, dude. With the preacher. Thing going. Yeah. Oh, Jesus bought it. God, yeah. dude. That's what drives me insane. Like they have a feature where like if you're AFK they'll kick you out, but like players will literally just sit back there and like just touch their remote or something, whatever, just so like they won't leave. But they're being useless. Absolutely troll them. You yeah. yeah, it's the ultimate troll. Yeah. It is. You're like, dude, what are you doing? Like, come on, man. He's just like I'm yep. getting experience no matter what. Like, yeah. I'm just sitting here getting experience. Why would I have to play? I yeah. didn't think about that. But yeah, right. you do. You, you do. You get XP. Yeah. You do. You get XP. But, like, it's not a lot, but does it matter? If no. you can just keep your character sitting back through the whole game, never have to do jack shit the entire game, and still get XP and still level up, Yeah. why not? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's another way to grieve, man. Yeah. So next up here, Ampgren asked or said over here on the Reddit page, with strikeout being the more popular mode, is it possible to have six v six strikeout or six v six King of the Hill implemented in the near future? And thanks for the Q and A. Reddit can be very blunt, to put it nicely, overly negative, really. So really, so keep that in mind with the responses. Uh, takes thick skin and wouldn't take everything to heart, so, uh, so to speak. Some just lashing out because they care and want the project to succeed. And then Jared said in quotations here, some just lashing out because they want because they care and want the project to succeed. This is the most important point I always keep in mind. Devs and players are in this together. We both want to succeed and make an awesome game. To answer your question, yes, in a future release, I want to have more 6v6 modes available on rotation. I was always a personal fan of 6v6 King of the Hill. Yes, bring that back. It's better than TDM. (laughs) For sure, you know. So next up here, Dan Lucas said, he's got four here. Number one, why hasn't there been a new 4v4 map in a whole year since Meltdown? Number two, why were wanted Palace Meltdown created if they... Uh, we're never going to be added to rank demolition. Number three, any chance on expanding battles on to three or four teams fighting in one match, even if it means lowering the team size to two or three, I feel like it could work on the bigger maps. Number four, ranked wingman or uh, ranked wingman strikeout. 
And Jared's response, number one, maps take a long time, and we are definitely looking at some ideas. Number two, fair point. I'd like to talk uh, talk to some more competitive players to see what they think. I'll take your vote into consideration. Number three, we've thought about it. Need to find the right map for it. 2v2v2v2 seems fun. And number four, for ranked wingman or ranked wingman strikeout, maybe. Okay. So, uh, 2v2v2? Yeah, so it'd be four teams of two. So it'd be eight players total. But that that's <laughs> like battle that. zone. Be fun. Yeah. That sounds so competitive as fuck. Yeah, but I mean, that might make battle zone actually fun. Yeah. One of y'all mentioned cool. something like that one time, having more than one, two teams yeah. on battle zone. They're all pushing in. Yeah. yeah. And give Get us a third generation. party going. Yeah. I mean, right. dude. To be do that would be some nutty tournament games. Oh yeah, yeah. like for real because I'm like you know, battle zone. teams playing in one game. Not not really the battle zone aspect, but like let's think of like I wouldn't say extraction. I wouldn't say division. I mean, damn. I mean, I guess a I guess it'd be like a TDM style or I guess strikeout. Like a wingman. Yeah, wingman strikeout, swingman. That'd TDM be fun. Style. Dude, yeah. it'd be kind of imagine it'd be trying to cap good. that. Yeah. With four I mean, teams. Yeah. Jeez. Eight people. I mean, like for real, dude. Could you imagine, like, I mean, even I, like, I could even imagine them doing it on the smaller maps. Like, yeah. to be fair, too. Like, uh, not depot. What's that? What's that other one? Uh, oh, with the fountain in the middle. Fountain in the middle. Yeah. Oh, um. That's what yeah. I'm thinking of. that would be such a good, like, competitive, tourney map gameplay with that type of mode, like. Yeah, it'd be cool. I would love to try that. Like, I would definitely be interested to test that out. Well, here's here's how you do a two v two v two v two game mode in Rogue Company and make it competitive and make it fun. You do something like Oddball, where you have a crown. Let's say a crown in the center of the map, and the first team that gets the crown starts accumulating points. And whenever that team gets eliminated, the team that eliminates that team gets the crown. And they're accumulating points while the other team respawns and the other teams are pushing them. So it's like, do you burn down the teams that don't have the crown so that the people with the crown can continue to accumulate the points? Or do you go after the team that has the crown that way that you can hopefully get the crown from them and start accumulating your own points? Dude, capture the flag would be fun like that. Oh, that would be nutty. Yeah. Be nutty. Yeah, and they could do like, they could do a two v two version of capture the flag where you've got four flags on the map. Whenever you capture one team's flag and return it to base, that team's eliminated oh. out of the match. Then it's a th- oh. it's three teams. Yeah. Oh, I would hate. That. I mean, I, I I don't, but like, oh god, we well, uh, get fired yeah. up on that. <laughs> yeah, dude, that'd be. Do you have something crazy. to watch? It's like I'm you leaving. Have, to have somebody watch or like just patrol around their flag yeah you know kind of defend it while the other person is trying to be the attempt to get one yeah right, grab yeah. one and return it home and dude like oh dude i mean yeah there's wow. there's so many ways to do something there's like- some interesting game modes you can do yeah yeah that's pretty cool I said, I just want to see interesting new dynamics implemented to keep things fresh and moving. I agree. And they could absolutely do that. Like we just gave them two, two V two V two V two game modes. That's not battle zone related. That would be super fun to play. I mean, could you imagine running customs where it's eight Ooh. people, but it's two, you know, it's four teams of two and there's a centralized yeah. crown or there's a capture the flag, or maybe there's like, Extraction bomb in the middle, and everybody is fighting over yeah. extraction bomb. Like, yeah, and who, yeah, intense, dude. yeah. But like, have the dodgeball rules kind of, yeah. Maybe implement. Obviously, that's the extraction because they have Man, the dodgeball really have to work together. Through. Yeah. Yes, like, exactly. It's a real life. It would force you to work together. Uh, yeah, that's some you kind of can't do that alone. I mean, you might be able to, but yeah, forget surrendering. I mean, yeah, yeah. Tally said, "Let's uh, just not keep it PvP. Let's change it about. Like sabotage is so good, but it's only available in customs. And they're supposed to be working out the kinks on sabotage and bringing it back, which I'm very excited for. 
Yeah. And that could be fun, 2v2v2v2. Two v two v two yeah. I mean, if you instead yeah. of instead of ending the round when you plant the bomb, it could be a similar mechanic like we were talking about with capture the flag, where if you plant it in a specific enemy's area, then that either eliminates them or it disperses that team up and puts them on another team. You know, make that oh. team stronger or something. You know, yeah. something crazy. So, next up, we got a little bit of a long one here by Inevitable. Number one, when players complain uh, about guns not working well or voice opinions on things it feels awful to be told by a representative of the game that they're wrong because i still shred with this gun and get three thousand downs per game with smgs number two how hard is it to make every gun feel like it's viable ideally every gun would be able to be used in some scenarios but it feels like some guns are just objectively better than others in all scenarios so why would you ever use the weaker ones both within a class and currently the way smgs can get outclassed by ars up close and obviously at range i want to be able to play different guns without feeling like i'm putting myself at a disadvantage number three my personal opinion is that when you ask devs when you as devs pick up that something is op you hit it a bit too hard with the nerf hammer for example the hrm getting nerfed in every possible way all at once why can't you nerf it slightly and then see the stats rather than leaving it op being op for ages and then completely overhauling it makes it feel unrecognizable same with smgs why not make smaller changes to test the waters of making the worse making them worse at range rather than more fall off horrible blooms smaller mags etc number four why can't scorch throw rosy how am i supposed to get thrown melee melee downs with scorch I appreciate the communication. I'm a thousand percent more willing to put up with frustrations when you are open and communicate with us about what's happening. All the best and don't let the toxic people keep you quiet. I've seen it happen in other games where the community is toxic and the devs don't communicate anymore. Thank you. Number one, if you're if the implication that was had from my casual Twitter posting of my scoreboard is you're wrong, then I sincerely apologize. That was not my intention, and I agree. It's a bad look. People can feel how they feel about something good or bad. Number two, short answer, it's difficult because what we change here will affect things over there and vice versa. I think every weapon should have a place in which they cater to distinct play styles and behaviors. There'll be growing pains and get there as we are seeing with the SMG AR conflict at close range. Number three, I can understand you feel that way. Some of the changes uh, were of the global adjustments on ARs to not stomp in SMG ranges. Others were more of balancing it against the other ARs. I'm sure you would feel different if the HRM was needing a buff, and I paired that with the global adjustments. Refer to number two about your SMG sentiments. Additionally, they're getting one more global bump on base accuracy and fall off ranges in the next update. Number four, a rocket punch will be pretty rad. I appreciate your feedback, and I no change can be challenging. We're working on this together and we'll get it in a good place. So right there, they did say that the SMGs are going to get some other, you know, buff, slot buff in the next update for it to make them a little bit more consistent. But I mean, I get it, you know, yeah, got dial it in. Yeah, exactly. And that's Next what we were time. that's what we were saying earlier. The changes that are happening when they get rolled out are not the be all end all changes for anything. It's just like in in the way that I've heard it explained from developers from Fortnite, from Call of Duty, from Rogue Company, from Paladins, from Apex Legends, from every every single game developer has always come out and said it's easier to make changes in a game or to implement a new weapon in the game that underperforms to see where exactly yeah. in statistic format where it's underperforming at so that they can go in there and make accurate adjustments to those weapons to make them feel more in line with where they should be. So if something gets overly nerfed, quote unquote, it's better to actually use that weapon more so that the developers can see the statistical data as, okay, it's not performing where it needs to be at these ranges or in this area or 
insert whatever situation here so that it can be adjusted accordingly. Running it one or two times and being like, well, it sucks. I'm not going to run it anymore. Yeah, you're not really helping anybody by doing that either. Like you're just making it worse for yourself and the developers because you can't give accurate feedback on it and they can't see your statistical data from it. So it's better to run those weapons and it's better to try to Find ways to play with those weapons when they are changed so that you can give feedback on it and they can see where it's not performing in the way that it needs to be and adjustments can be made to it. It's like the Ibex. If nobody plays the Ibex and it's the yeah. most unused weapon in the game, then how do they know to go in there to fix it? And whenever they ask the community, they're like, well, it just feels bad. Well, that can mean different things to different people, you know? So, yeah. So. Next up here, uh, Particular Sky has a post here. Hey, Jared, I appreciate the Q&A. I don't know of any other game that is as transparent as you have been in the past two months. That being said, I have some feedback and some questions. Feedback, number one, I love the clear sense of direction that you and your team are giving the game. Keep it up. Number two, I know that you are bumping up the base accuracy for SMGs in this next update. For the future of balancing, I think an increase to recoil, not bloom, and range would be best. I have no idea how difficult that is, but I think the players would much rather would much rather that. Uh, number three, I do love that quick play is available and that wingman is in rotation. I would love to see a filter be added to quick play. Dodgeball is my favorite mode, so that I can avoid the modes I don't like, such as battle zone and extraction. Which is weird because extraction is dodgeball with a point. Yeah. Questions number one: Can each class have? a universal perk for example duelist all have replenish intel track around supporter has lifeline sniper has evade breacher has bulletproof and defenders have gadgeteer slash energized in the same vein what about intrinsic perks per class such as duelist have faster health regeneration support revives with more hp breacher has larger ammo capacity defenders take less damage and intel moves faster these probably would just overcomplicate things but have you thought about something like this number two would you consider adding a full auto setting to dmrs <laughs> jesus christ number three <laughs> that would be an assault rifle number three can you make the lobby menu an endless scroll uh, number four, can you add rogue mastery challenges similar to the weapon mastery challenges? Once again, thank you so much for the time you're setting aside for us. It is greatly appreciated. Number one, for the questions, potentially we are actively looking at lo uh, locking in certain perks by role or certain qualities of perk by role. Perks by role. Something to think about, and I like your suggestions. Number two, consider adding full auto. Not sure. The semi-auto nature, one major component that makes them distinct. We might stray too far into AR territory, but we'll see. Number three, the lobby menus is an endless scroll. Explain, not sure I'm following. Number four, rogue mastery challenges similar to weapon mastery challenges. Neat idea. I can pass that along to my system designer to think about that. Appreciate you taking the time to give feedback as a question. I do like that idea of like these specific classes have these specific perks at this yeah, specific cool. level. Yeah. Right. So, and I know that that would like, it would bring out the individuality for the class as a whole instead of the rogue. But I think that that would be like, okay, we need, we need this. So I'm going to pick this character that can reveal people that also has access to track arounds. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and that kind of falls in line with that video that I made about gunsmith a little bit too. So I like this, this person's feedback here. Next up here, Mr. Wet Poops. I love the direction of SMGs in terms of actual having an SMG identity, but a great weakness, in my opinion, is, th is that even close range, skill shots aren't necessarily as reliable as they are on ARs, DMRs, pistols, and light machine guns. For instance, in close quarters combat scenarios, I would still prefer a handy Mamba or a KA-30 because it's easier to it's easier than SMGs to hit headshots at close range. Obviously, SMGs are still viable, but the effect of ceiling seems fairly low because you can't consistently nail headshots in close quarter combat scenarios like you can with most other weapons. An idea I have would be to increase ADS time on all weapons but pistols, shotties, and SMGs. Ideally, this would further cement shotguns and SMGs as the close quarters 
combat weapons of choice without sacrificing the ADS range and accuracy of the other weapons. Also, this would make me so, so, so happy. Maybe please get an option to toggle aim assist off on console. Uh, Jared said SMGs are getting a global bump on base accuracy and fall off range in the next patch. Let me know if you're still feeling that way. Not a bad suggestion on the ID on the ADS time. It's a tricky one and I'm not entirely sure it's the best way. I'll test it in dev and seriously vet if there's any value. And then you want aim assist off for console. Why? <laughs> I mean, that's a fair question, right? It is fair. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that is interesting though, to have different ADS speeds and have like the weapon upgrade paths would allow them more versatility on having faster ADSs. You know what I mean? Makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Like if I'm carrying around a conviction, how long do you think in real life it's going to take you to shoulder this thing and to pull it up? Slow. A little bit longer than a damn. Yeah. SMG. Exactly. Yeah. So I think, and and of course, not a bad suggestion. It's tricky. Not entirely sure it's the best way. So that, and another thing is that would help eliminate ghost peeking. If it takes longer for the ADS on the sniper rifles to come up, and I know that they, they want the sniper rifles to be snappy and quick, but you're exploiting the game by, by ghost peeking and getting headshots. It's bad. Dude, sniper rifles aren't snappy and quick. Mm-mm. No, not at all. Like cod, dude. Who's got that quick hand perk, bro? That's what, yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. So next up is Sylvine Kiwi. Any plan to rework glitch is putting fixed spawns on strikeout along with better spawn protection. Something imaginable. I really don't like the randomness it has. You can spawn right next to the point or on the other side of the map, and you still get spawn killed from time to time. Do you have any plans for a whole economy rework? I always felt like this was the weakest and least interesting part of the game. Basically, I'm more or less always buy the same things at the same time. There is no thinking involved in the process. Uh, I really need to thoroughly figure out the best way to make glitches ability both incarnations aren't really hitting right for different reasons we'll get there spawn logic is on my team's to-do list for sure i agree that spawn camping can still happen and that also the spawns can be too far or too random especially in modes where there are shifting objectives you're on the nose with the economy i'm slowly chipping away at that so that players need to make more meaningful choices. It's a big picture thing that I need to approach slowly and carefully. So, yeah. And, and I agree. Like normally I have the same upgrades. I buy the same perks, you know, there's a specific path that I take with every single, you know, Mm -hmm. unless I'm playing with like saint, I may wait to buy a weapon. I may wait to buy utility in favor of buying a perk that allows you to heal faster. But it's only with like Dahlia and Saint. It, you really don't gain that benefit out of any of the other rogues, in my opinion. So. I agree. All right. And then last up here, we have a post by The Legion. The main issue I have with the game is the lag spikes that keep happening on the servers. The fact that some SMGs can't even win close up 1v1s anymore. Lastly, the force. Uh, the forced versus PC players. Usually whoever has the PC player is usually the team that is dominating the other. Is there any way we could get console lobbies and only play with PC players if we have a PC player in our party? Executions. Uh, okay. Exe- okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. But he said here, Jared said, executions would be rad. That'll have some serious dev work, but I'll keep that on the list. We are actively investigating our game stability and trying to implement improvements. It's a long journey, so hang in there. SMGs are getting another global bump. We've talked about that. Um, Unfortunately, can't speak to cross-play stuff at this time. So, I mean, executions would be rad. I'm just going to say that. I've I've, I've been saying that for a while, you know. (laughs) But, um... At least they're actively investigating the stability of the game. Lag spikes, things like that sucks. It 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 is what it is at the end of the day. So I'm hopefully they'll come up with a solution to that sooner rather than later. You know? 
So since that went on, I'm going to continue to hold the community section. And that was kind of the community section, right? Because it was it was both. It was Jared Judications and the community section yeah. came together and had a content baby for the broadcast. You know? And we, we delivered. Did. And of course we were there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we watched we the whole watched thing. It. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, of course, you know, I didn't tackle all of the questions that's in there. There's a lot of questions buried inside of answers, buried inside of questions on there. So it is on the Reddit page. If you're interested in knowing more about what's going on, asking questions, or just seeing some of the other questions and responses, please go over to the Reddit page and check it out. Always feel free to post over there. I mean, Reddit is Reddit is going to be Reddit at the end of the day. So if you're not comfortable giving your feedback to like me or any of the other cr- part members of the creator program, then you can absolutely put your Reddit, the Discord, leave it on Twitter or leave it in the Reddit on the Rogue Company Reddit. And it will get seen by the devs at some point. They'll take it into consideration. But for this episode, I'm here with Dirt Lord. I'm here with Garbo. I'm here with Griffin. And thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys so much for watching. And we will catch you guys on the next episode. Have a good one, guys. Bye,